Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I'm your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. So in our class today, we are going to introduce a whole new concept, and that is uh, activity-based costing. It is a very important concept and commonly tested in our, in our examinations. So as we always do, first of all, it's very important for us to understand the concept behind activity-based. After we have the concept behind activity based now, we can proceed and uh, look at some of the illustration questions. So, looking at activity based costing, what is the first thing that you must always do? Ideally, this is one of the methods that we normally use to allocate our overheads. So, it's a one of the methods used in allocation of the overheads. Remember, uh, using allocation, or that whenever we'll be looking at allocation of overheads, there are so many methods that you normally talk about. In that case, when you are doing uh, overheads, we looked at a case whereby I was uh, dealing with a stepwise method, I was dealing with a repeated distribution method, I was dealing with a simultaneous equation method. All these were the methods that we were using to allocate, let's say, like service departments or rather the aspect of service overheads to production overheads. So also looking at activity-based costing, this concept is just the same. We'll be looking at ways of allocating our overheads. And whenever you're talking of overheads, ideally, whenever you're talking of overheads, these are indirect costs. Whenever you're talking of overheads, just as we had mentioned earlier on when you're dealing with overheads, you noted that these are just what? Indirect costs. So these are uh, indirect costs. So, looking at ways that we want to allocate our indirect cost so that we can achieve our cost of a product, that is a cost per unit. And that should also take us to another concept, just, we are just uh, doing a, a form of, uh, we are just uh, looking at what we had uh, talked about earlier on, so we are just kind of uh, doing a recap on uh, what we did. So, we need to understand the aspect of always of which at this point you're looking at a form of what indirect costs and looking at this indirect cost now we want to allocate these indirect costs earlier on we talked of uh, methods of allocating this uh, indirect cost and uh, looking at the same case we talked of something known as what the overhead if you can recall overheads absorption rate overhead absorption rate over the absorption rates, or rather known as OAR, the over the absorption rate. In that, we want to determine the rate per unit, the overhead cost per unit. It's kind of just coming up with the overhead cost per unit. That is what you're telling me as overhead absorption rate, the overhead absorption rate, OAR determining the overhead cost per unit. And looking at uh, the methods that we are using earlier on, which normally term them as traditional methods of allocating for these overheads. Basically, in our traditional uh, method, you notice that uh, we are using a certain base of allocation. We are using base of allocation. Say like, for example, whenever I'm having costs, Whenever we do have a say like a labor cost, assuming we do have a component of a labor cost, maybe I want to allocate our labor cost. We want to allocate our labor cost. In allocating the labor cost initially, we are saying that I can identify, it will always be upon us to identify a base, to identify a base. And in this case, you can talk of what? Labor hours. Labor hours. So in allocating the labor cost, assuming I'm having 1 million as our cost, and I'm having labor hours of 10,000. So if I want to determine my overhead cost in relation to labor, we are taking what? We are taking uh, the aspect of the total cost, we divide by the base, which in this case is labor hours. This was a traditional method. This was our traditional method. The main concept or our main idea, remember as I mentioned earlier on, is to achieve our product cost. Is to achieve our product cost. And our product cost ideally will comprise of number one, materials, labor, and what? 
overheads. This is what will give us our product cost per unit. This is what will give us our product cost per, per unit. So linking ABC, linking activity-based costing with what we did earlier on in relation to traditional costing. Now, <coughs> this is where ABC will come in. For like traditional, we are using such basis of allocation. But whenever we'll be talking of activity-based costing, it will always be upon us as management accountants to identify the activities within the organization, the major activities within the organization. After we've identified the major activities within the organization, it is the same activities that we are going to use to allocate these overheads. It is these activities that we are going to use to determine the overheads. So basically, that's why we are talking of what? ABC. That This is not a traditional method of allocating our overheads, but instead we are dealing with new method of allocating over, of our overheads, known as what? Known as ABC. So key different is that for traditional, we are using this basis of allocation. Whereas for ABC, I'll be using what? Activities. I'll be using activities. So that is the main difference. So going deep into that, I want us to introduce now that concept after we've gone through uh, the concept itself. Now introducing activity-based costing. Suppose you ask, what is ABC? What will you mention? Suppose you ask, what is ABC? What is activity? based costing if you asked activity based costing what will you mention that is what i want us to talk about today that is what i want us to talk about today activity based costing so in a simple terms we can uh, say that activity based costing is a costing uh, method this is a costing method this is a costing method a costing method this is a costing uh, method that identifies activities that identifies activities that identifies activities that identifies activities in an organization in an organization in an organization in an organization and assigns the cost of each activity and assigns the cost of each activity 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 to all products and services to all products to all products and services to all products and services to all products and services according to the actual consumption by each according to the actual according to the actual according to the actual consumption by each according to the actual consumption by each according to uh, the actual consumption by each activity so basically that is a simple term that is how you can mention activity based costing we are talking of a costing method that, that identifies activities in an organization and assigns the cost of each activity to all products and services according to their actual uh, consumption by each, according to the actual consumption by each. So keyword here, you'll find that whenever we'll be looking at activity-based costing, the main purpose of us doing that, it will be upon us to identify the activities of all the products. Whenever we're looking at activities, we'll be looking at it later on deeply. Ideally, we'll be looking at... Uh, such as machining, we'll be looking at uh, activity, probably material handling, all these are part of the activities that we are talking about. So after we've 
understood the concept of ABC costing, now there are some key elements that we should always be able to identify whenever I'm dealing with activity-based costing. So at this point, we've talked of identifying the activity. And what will be the basis of identifying this activity? The basis of identifying this activity, we are going to term it as cost drivers. So talk of cost drivers. So remember at this point, we say that I need to identify and assign the cost of each activity to all the products and services according to the actual consumption. So the basis of identifying these activities we are looking at what is known as what? As cost drivers. So it is important also for us to understand what a cost driver is. So basically, to do that, we normally say that a cost driver is any activity or activities. A cost driver, talk of a cost driver, cost driver, is any activity or activities, is any activity is any activity or activities or activities or activities or activities of which take place within an organization of which uh, take place of which are take place within the organization within the organization within the organization, within the organization, and which cause costs to be incurred, and which cause costs to be incurred, cause costs to be incurred, to be incurred. So you are looking at a cost driver as what, as any activity or activities of which take place within the organization and which cause cost to be incurred. So we are looking at a form of a basis of the cost to be incurred, a basis of the cost to be incurred, a basis of the cost to be incurred. So you find that our cost drivers ideally, they will always be guiding us when you want to identify the aspect of uh, cost, uh, whenever you want to identify the basis of placing that cost into. So after you've talked of that, again, Another important element that you should also be able to understand, for this cost to be incurred or for these activities, I'll always be talking of an item known as a cost pool. Cost pool. Talk of a cost pool. Also, a very important concept that you must always grasp at any given point I'm handling, ABC. So looking at a cost pool, what should ring at the back of your mind? So ideally, whenever we're talking of a cost pool, we are talking of a... Collection of costs which may be charged to products. This is a collection of costs. Collection of costs which may be charged, which may be charged, which may be charged, which may be charged, which may be charged to products, which may be charged to uh, products, which may be charged to products by the use of by the use of cost drivers by the use of cost driver so can, if you can recall cost center when you're looking at a traditional uh, costing we talked of an element known as cost center meaning that this a part within organization that where only cost is in can so relating it to the cost pool, relating it to the cost pool, we are looking at collection of costs which may be charged to products by the use of a cost driver. Remember we said cost driver this is a basis of identification of our cost. The activity that will cause a cost to be income. So after we've understood these elements, you'll find that working out activity-based costing will be very simple for us. But before we look at any form of illustration question, there are also some of key elements that you must always have in mind at any given point you are dealing with what? We are dealing with activity-based costing. This in will include, for, say for example, if you ask, uh, 
maybe uh, the steps now talk of the steps of ABC what are some of the steps that we need to follow for us to prepare our activity based costing statement what are some of these costs or steps that we need to that we need to follow so talk of the steps in ABC costing so I should take us to steps steps to be followed in ABC system so talk of steps in A B C system steps in ABC system very important steps that always whenever we are talking of ABC we should always be having these steps at the back of our mind so we are talking of steps in ABC system steps in ABC system very key for us to understand these steps so step number one whenever we'll be talking of uh, ABC system so talk of our step number one step one step one it will always be very key for us to identify the activities within the organization so identify major activities identify major activities identify major activities within the organization that should always be our number one step identify major activities in an organization in an organization in an organization that should be our step number one always identifying the major activities in the organization that should take us to step number two step number two what is the second step that you must always have in mind so step number two we will be looking at uh, identify the factors which determine the size of the costs so this ideally you are talking of the activity you are talking of the cost drivers and the cost pools so talk of identify their factors identify factors identify factors identify factors which determine the costs of an activity which determine which determine the cost which determine the cost of an activity which determine the cost of an activity which determine the cost of an activity a very key concept and the beauty part of it is that if we are asked to determine the factors which de uh, that is identify the factors which determine which determine which determine which determine the costs of an activity ideally at this point a good student will recall what we've just mentioned here the aspect of cost drivers so ideally step number two is upon us to identify the cost drivers it's upon us to identify the cost drivers a very key a very key step so in identifying the cost driver some of the examples of the cost drivers probably if you can look at we normally look at examples of uh, these cost drivers assuming i'm having an activity here we do have assuming we do have activity and what will be the possible cost drivers so talk of our cost drivers here talk of our cost drivers at that point so in this case take for example i'm having activity known as what maybe i'm having this activity ordering ordering is our activity the question will be what will be the basis or rather what will cost us for us to have what this ordering cost what will cost us or rather what will cause us for us to uh, have the ordering so ideally in that case what will lead for what will lead us to have the ordering cost what will lead us for us to have the ordering cost basically in this case of course we'll be looking at what number of orders say i'm having number of number of orders so you'll find that the number of orders will be our cost driver for this activity number of orders will be the cost driver for this activity another case take for example like uh, maybe i'm having materials handling materials material handling i'm having material handling so having our material handling what will lead us for us to incur such a cost that should give us say like number of production runs maybe i'm having number of production runs number of production runs 
Alternatively, we can talk of what? Number of materials. Alternatively, we can talk of number of materials in that case. That is just an example. Also, another case, maybe you can look at, uh, say, like uh, dispatching. Talk of uh, dispatching. Talk of uh, dispatching. Say, for example, I'm having dispatching here. This is an activity within the organization. But what will lead us for us, what will lead us to have this cost? That will be a component of what? Number of dispatches. Number of dispatches. Number of dispatches. We should be having that case. Also, we can talk of an example of what? Maybe the aspect of a setup. Maybe I'm having setup. Let's talk of setup, for example. Maybe I'm having setup. This is an activity. We are setting up some machines within our organization. So what will lead us for us to have this setup? In that case, we'll be talking of what? Number of setups. Number of setups. So you'll find whenever we are talking of a cost driver, which has clearly been stated here, we'll be looking at this point whereby I'm having an activity. And in this case, we are looking at what? The cost drivers. So cost drivers will always guide us. The aspect or the factor that will lead us to incur that cost is what you're turning it as what as cost driver so after we've uh, looked at uh, step number three that should step number two that should take us to step number three step number three step number three we'll be looking at what we should identify or we should place number three collect the cost for each activity collect the cost, collect the cost, collect the costs of each activity, collect the costs of each activity, of each activity, of each activity into cost pools, into cost pools, into cost pools. Remember we are talking for the cost pool, whereby we noted that a cost pool is a collection of costs which may be charged to products by the use of cost driver by the use of cost driver that's why it was very important for us to uh for uh, it was a uh, very key for us to look at these items even before we looked at the steps so because you'll see step number three after you've identified our cost drivers now it will be upon us to collect the cost of each activity to collect the cost of each activity it won't it, it what is known as what the cost uh, pool into what is known as the cost pool into what is known as the cost pools so that's why it's very important and the beauty part of it is that we had looked at it at that point so after you've uh, talked of uh, that that should take us to step number four so that should take us to step number four which should be our last step step number four what do we need to do in our step number four so for step number four this is what you are going to look at we are going to charge support overheads to products on the basis we need to charge support ohds we need to charge support overheads we need to charge support overheads on the basis of their usage on the basis on the basis of their usage on the basis of their on the basis of their usage on the basis of their usage of the activity of the activity on the basis of their usage of the activity so basically that is what you are talking of some of the steps that you must always consider whenever we are looking at whenever we are looking at uh, abc whenever you are looking at abc so you'll find that whenever you're talking of uh, the usage of the activity, ideally you're talking of a product usage of an activity. It's measured by the number of activity cost driver it generates. So basically in that case, you're saying that uh, product usage of an activity is measured by the number of the activity cost driver it generates. By the number of activity cost driver it generates. Say for example, like uh, number of orders. I'm having say like product A. For product A, how many number of orders will we, be, will we be having? Say like, talk of maybe setups. For product A or product B, how many number of setups will we be having? And that's why you are mentioning under that, that's why you are mentioning 
that at this point you'll find that the usage of an activity is measured by the number of the activity cost driver it generates. So cost drivers, then we identify also what? The number of the cost drivers that we'll be having. So my good students, up to that point you'll find that it is as if we've gone through almost the whole concept of activity-based costing. Understanding each and every step, understanding each and every concept of the activity-based costing. So long as you have in mind it's just the method of attaining or allocating our overheads. And as at the end of the day, our main focus or concern will be for us to determine the cost per unit. As we are all familiar, the cost per unit will always be determined by having the material cost, labor cost, and of course the overheads. So allocation of all this will come here on number three, the aspect of the overheads. Because material and labor high chance will not change. So absorption of this overhead is what will change and that is where the difference will come in if we compare with traditional method. So to this juncture, thank you so much. I want us to meet in the next session whereby we are going to handle a question for activity based costing. You have a very clear understanding on how to work out questions for activity based costing. Thank you so much and let us meet in the next session. Thank you.